Researchers found a trifecta of vulnerabilities on FOSCAM cameras. Uh, so Andy, you know, I know the IoT space, we talk about it all the time with stuff getting compromised, and notably in that space, there's a lot of these web cameras or DVR type cameras, and it sounds like you have another, I uh, have a story about um, something in that regard. I do, yes. Uh, an IoT research company actually discovered that uh, what they call a critical chain of vulnerabilities in uh, FOSCAM security cameras. Okay, FOSCAM. So the first one is actually an arbitrary file deletion vulnerability. So uh, through the web API for the camera itself, uh, what an attacker can do uh, is actually access a, a function on the web API without credentials um, that is, is its intended purpose is actually to delete screenshots that the camera takes once it's been uploaded to the user. So this, the underlying code actually suffers from a path traversal vulnerability. Okay. So you can invoke the function and then use the dot dot slash. Uh, right, to kind of back yourself to, to up. Back yourself up. To whatever file you want to really delete. Exactly. Deeper, yeah, you know. all the way to the root. The second vulnerability is actually a stack-based buffer overflow vulnerability. So there's a function where a user can pass in a, a parameter, and that parameter is actually saved in a variable that has a specific size. So an attacker can leverage that and intentionally send in um, a, a large string to overflow the buffer and crash the web service. So that leads into the next one, which is a shell command injection vulnerability. So uh, you can configure the NTP server on these cameras. Mm -hmm. um, the command to do so actually requires uh, admin credentials, but like we've seen. Right, you, you have bypass. them now. You right. have, you, I mean, you don't technically <laughs> have them, well, right. but you've bypassed that, that check entirely. So what you can do is you can call this function and pass in a URL for the NTP server um, that input is not sanitized. So it allows for spaces, but it also allows for semicolons, which lets yeah. you break out of that shell and run a new command. And uh, one of the things that this research company found was that all the processes that run on this camera actually run as root. So when you you inject that command, that command also runs as root, um, which is not good. Um, and a lot of these, a lot of these uh, vulnerabilities, they fall under somewhat basic security uh, concepts, you know, mm -hmm. like... Uh, like the OWASP top 10, probably. Yeah, yeah, separation of privilege. Don't have all the, pro all the processes running as root, because if you, you get in anywhere, you, you're in kind of in the same level, which is not good. Um, and then the input sanitation, which we see a lot with web vulnerabilities, like SQL injection, things like that. Um, really, with, with any user input, you should be extra careful, and you should make sure that you're only allowing the specific set of characters that are necessary. Whitelist them, in, in a sense. Right, right. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a lot of things I have to say about this. But um, so, like you said, input sanitization, I would say like nine times out of 10, every type of pen test or when I look at an application, that is usually one of the things I'll find is that whoever wrote the code doesn't do good input sanitization of uh, data that's sent in. I guess the one thing I was gonna also say about this IoT, very hard space in general in terms of keeping it secure because a lot of people just take this stuff, they set it up, and they never think that they have to do anything with it. As long as it keeps running, they never patch it, never do any of that. A lot of people take these devices, they put them on their network, they just expect them to work. They don't do a lot of maintenance like they might do on their Windows machine or something like that, you know, in terms of applying patches and whatnot. So definitely something people need to pay attention to. Uh, I guess the one thing that I would like to see more so, and a lot of vendors are doing this now, is to implement auto update features in their firmware. So when a new version comes out, uh, the device will check and it'll automatically apply it and reboot it or something like that. And I know a lot of home routers are doing that now, um, but I don't know that everybody is because, you know, it requires more software development time, more yeah. tests, and a lot of times they just want to get these products out to market as quick as possible. So um, uh, I guess we'll see how that goes. Now, Andy, I got a quick question for you. The, uh, the research was done and it was announced. There's nothing in the wild uh, that was provided, correct? So these researchers were partnered with, with the company. They said, this is what we found. Uh, there's going to be some firmware stuff that's going to be updated, but no one threw exactly how to do it out on the internet, correct? Yeah, that's correct. The, the research company did state in the article that this has not been seen or used to the best of their knowledge in the wild at all. 
Um, so this is purely in a, in a, in a lab setting. Um, and it also mentions that, that they have worked pretty closely with Foscam to get a new firmware um, that's not vulnerable to these uh, vulnerabilities here pushed out. So you're right. With IoT devices, a lot of the time you see people will, will buy them, they'll install them, and then they'll sort of forget about them. Now in this case, it, your user should be proactive in making sure that any updates that get pushed out by the vendor or the manufacturer get installed on the devices themselves. In cases like this where security vulnerabilities are patched, they just need to be applied to the device itself. So we had Andy on the show. He's one of the newer members of the team. So it's good to get some different perspectives from people. So I always like adding people in. It was fun having Andy on the show this week. Being on Threat Track was great. It was my first time. Um, I had a lot of fun. Um, I had a lot of fun researching the, the articles and, and reading through them and then talking about them with uh, some of my peers.